The severe weather risk is growing not just today, but also later this week, and we could be dealing with some tornadoes too. Let's start off across parts of the Mid-Atlantic into West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio this afternoon. We're going to be watching a pretty decent jet streak swinging out of the Central Plains. Out ahead of this, we're going to see warm air lifting north through this region with a warm front that's going to be draped like this. So, along that front with really unstable conditions this afternoon, we're going to see thunderstorms start to develop that could have the potential for a few tornadoes. Now, the main threat, I think, is, are, are going to, the main threats rather are going to be damaging winds, also tornadoes. But Storm Prediction Center uh, also seeing this as well. And they're talking about the idea. And if you look at the low-level wind shear in the lowest profile of the atmosphere, it really changes direction with height, especially as you have this warm front lifting out like this, and it's moving north. In the upper levels, again, you have those strong jet streak winds moving through. So with that, some decent thunderstorms going, some bowing segments where those storms bow out. When that happens, you get into damaging wind threat. Also, uh, there's going to be some tornado uh, threats as well this afternoon and to this evening. So stay weather aware in this area. And beyond this, once we get rid of this system, we're watching the next one, which is going to bring the potential for severe weather as we head into not just Thursday, but also into Friday. Thursday, there's going to be some severe weather. Not as much, but Friday's going to be, be the big day from the Great Lakes all the way down into Texas. But if you back it up to Thursday, there is a slight risk. This is what was in my mind. I thought, this doesn't look right, but there is going to be some severe weather on Thursday across Iowa, Kansas, maybe Kansas. I don't know. We sh we'll have to watch the southern end of this. It may get extended a little bit further to the south, but... The idea that this really expands heading into Friday, certainly there. So be weather aware. Back to the maps we go, and we'll take a look at the models through the rest of the week. There's the severe weather moving through the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic and parts of the Ohio Valley today. Cold air moving in behind this system. That's going to drop our temperatures. We're going to see some snow around the Great Lakes, too. Cold enough for snow. I mean, that's hard to believe, but it's looking likely. And then temperatures warm up. And now we're looking toward Wednesday and Thursday. Here comes your Thursday threat across parts of Iowa. And then Friday, as this system wraps up toward the Great Lakes, we get a cold front dropping south. This may end up being a little bit slower. So the European has been a little bit delayed with this activity heading into the weekend. All right, let's take a look across the uh, the Mid-Atlantic, also the south. Well, we're quiet here. However, once we get into the afternoon, look how these thunderstorms explode across Kentucky, West Virginia. Some of those could be into Ohio, too. Uh, and notice how they're lining up. That gives me an idea that we're probably going to be seeing damaging winds and some hail. However, with that rotation in the atmosphere, that tornado risk pretty high with really warm temperatures on the way ahead of the front. Further to the north around the Great Lakes, there comes the rain and the snow through this region. Temperatures dropping behind our front. Now we're dealing with chilly air building in from the northwest and lake effect snows certainly possible it's not going to be a huge snow event nonetheless we're talking about some accumulation downwind of the lakes maybe gaylord we're seeing some snow it's gonna to be tough to get the snow toward traverse city but the up of michigan here to northern wisconsin some areas could see two inches three four and in a few isolated spots i, I think we see more than six inches and that could also be possible here from really north and east of erie up towards dunkirk I think it's mostly south of Buffalo. Over towards Jamestown, we may squeeze some snow showers out of this. And then here into the far northeast, too. Uh, downwind of, of Lake uh, Ontario. The Tug Hill Plateau could see some snow also into the Green and White Mountains. High temperatures, pretty warm today. However, they're on the way down as we move into Tuesday. There comes the cold air moving in from the northwest. Highs will be much colder. A good 10 to 20, in some cases 30 degrees colder than we are going to be today in many of these areas. Further into the north and east, a closer look at this area. There's your storms moving through the mid-Atlantic today. Those really get going. And look, this could happen, especially in the parts of West Virginia, maybe after dark tonight. So from Charleston up to Morgantown, maybe even up towards Pittsburgh, and then further south into West Virginia from Beckley to Bluefield. Those storms start to weaken as they move this way late tonight. But nonetheless, you want to stay weather aware pretty much across the entire mountain state as we head through today. And then some of those may streak into parts of D.C. heading into the evening hours and then into the overnight hours. A few strong storms possible in central and northern Virginia. And here's a look at your high temperatures today in the 70s. Hey, by the way, thanks for joining the live stream. If you're just popping over, you can back the video up to the beginning and check things out at any time. Or if you're considering subscribing, I hope you'll come back. 
uh, and check these videos out as I uh, put them out every day. I'm Travis. If you're brand new, welcome. I used to be a chief meteorologist years ago on TV. So if you're looking for a weather source here on YouTube, I hope you'll come back. This area, no precipitation for now. We're dry as we head through today. We could use some rain uh, in, in parts of Kansas and Oklahoma, but a little bit of rain trying to break out as our front drops to the south across east Texas, southern Oklahoma. And then that pushes into the deep south. You can see the front advancing all the way to the coast. And your temperature is much cooler today because of that. We're back closer to normal maybe. Maybe even a touch below normal as we head into Tuesday. Highs are much cooler across Texas too. We're back into the 80s and 90s, way into south Texas. Whereas Dallas is back into the mid-70s versus near 90 Across the northern tier here, temperatures on the way down. We do have some rain and snow moving through. That's going to be gone by the time we get to Wednesday. And then we see colder temperatures here. That will change, though. We'll, we will warm up. And I think that's the, the big difference once we get into, say, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Temperatures on the way up. And then across the southwest, we have this pesky upper low here across, really, Southern California causing some impacts. So, with this onshore flow, I think we start to see more clouds and we'll see some rain and snow showers here into the Sierras. Also, those could push east into the Wasatch, so some snow possible here into the higher elevations. I don't know if it snows down at the uh, at the Salt Lake City level, but this is looking pretty cold by Friday and Saturday. And if this upper low gets cut off like this, you can imagine snow showers, certainly not uncommon this time of year, across the Rockies and into uh, the Intermountain West. Temperatures today a little bit cooler than yesterday, another hot day tomorrow, but maybe not as hot, again, as what we've seen recently over the last several days, and a big ridge across the west, keeping us fairly dry all the way into the Pacific Northwest, at least for the next couple of days. Now, this has been showing up for the last, oh, I don't know, week or so, dropping into the northern Rockies with some rain, maybe some snow here into Montana, Idaho, into Wyoming, and then that drops south into Utah. And then here comes that cold core of air cut off somewhere in the Intermountain West region. I think it's going to be tough to time out exactly where that will be, but that could keep things unsettled here. And here's a look at your highs today, which will be relatively warm. All right, that's all I got for this video, guys. I hope to see you next time and hope you have a great Monday wherever you are. See ya.